Hello everyone. Today I'll uh, talk about uh, use of functional monitor. Use of functional monitor is a tool that helps you to monitor the health of your uh, APIs. It could be mule APIs, non mule APIs. There are various features that you get with uh, use of function monitor, such as dashboards, metrics, alerts, logging, etc. You can read through uh, this particular blog post as well as uh, the documentation of Newsoft regarding what are the features that you get from uh, function monitor. I'll add those links on uh, the video description. Let's move on towards the interesting sections of this particular function monitor that is how to install or to use a bad uh, CLI command line interface. Then how do we secure our credentials in secret manager? We'll then take a look at a sample uh, BDD script that is uh, written in news of function monitor using any point platform or through the CLI process. Let me bring you towards the installation steps. So for installation, uh, what you can do is you can follow this particular uh, link to take you to this page. And within that page, uh, you can follow the instructions according to the operating system that you're using. So let's understand what's happening in this uh, curl command. So it is trying to download an installation script and then running that script on your bash uh, console. Now let's go see what's present inside the installation script. So once you move into the installation script, you can see that script is also trying to download a zip file to your uh, home folder. Now let's go see the MuleSoft Nexus repository, which contains this uh, zip file. So the latest version of uh, the bad CLI wrapper from is from two, two years ago or three years ago. And the version which I currently use uh, is also version 1.1.14. So you download this particular uh, zip file and then you extract it. Uh, let me share another window and explain uh, the steps after you download and uh, extract those uh, zip file contents. All right. So uh, to reiterate, we are uh, looking at function monitor. And that was a feature that you get from AnyPoint Studio. And you are uh, installing the bat CLI command to work with the uh, function monitor. The steps to verify whether the CLI has been uh, installed properly, it's only a zip file that you have to extract. There is no additional installation steps. These CLI commands uh, run on top of Java runtime. So uh, once you extract the zip file, that's it, nothing else. So to verify that the installation has been successfully done, you execute the version command as shown on screen. And then uh, you execute the help command to also verify the same, whether the installation has been successful or not. The help command also gives you other commands that you can execute, such as uh, shown on screen, validate, uh, config, etc. You don't actually need the CLI to create a function monitor. I'll explain why you need the CLI uh, so on in the coming steps. On your trial account, you will not see this functional monitor in your any point monitoring tab. You only get this with other types of uh, licenses such as platinum, titanium, etc. You can create functional monitoring uh, tests or scripts only by using any point platform. Here you can see an example where uh, a schedule has been uh, set up and this function monitor is running. And uh, the last successful test 
uh, is shown over here where uh, you can see two uh, test cases have been passed. Now, the reason why we need the CLI is so that you do not see the credentials that are being passed in the test script. When you're calling an API, you will have to pass some authorization parameters. So client ID, client secret, username, password, things like that. So those will, if you provide within the uh, any point platform itself in plain text, it will be visible in the logs also in plain text. That's a security violation. To avoid that, we have to hide the parameters as shown over here in authorization tag with star marks. Now, the use of CLI is to facilitate this particular action. If you don't do that, what happens? Any parameters that you provide, such as client ID, client secret, any sensitive information uh, will get logged along with the request and response payload. On uh, the below, you can see the response payload. Up above, you can see the credentials along with the request URL. So when you're creating a functional monitor, the steps that you need to take to hide the credentials and get those credentials from secret manager of any point are you have to select the location. The default location that you get in US region is US East 1, US East 2, that is Ohio and North Virginia. If you want to make use of secret manager, its credentials and hide your secrets in function monitor, then you have to create a private location. You don't have to do much, you just have to click on select location, provide the name for the location and create a private location. The next steps would be MuleSoft would automatically deploy onto Cloud of version one, API functional monitoring runner dot jar with worker size of 0.2 Vigo. Okay. So it depends on which environment you have selected. So to that environment, we'll deploy the private location jar file. Only this private location uh, jar file can get credentials from secret manager and pass it on to your uh, scripts. So you need this. Without this, you, uh, you cannot uh, write some uh, uh, commands or code in your uh, functional monitor to access the credentials in a secure manner from secret manager, any point secret manager. So any point secret manager can be used to store credentials, username, password, client ID, client secret, etc. This is similar to a vault. In any point secret manager, the environment that you had selected earlier for your private location and the business group that you had selected for your function man manager should sync. Okay, it should be the exactly the same thing. In this case, you can see the secret manager is using secret group that is present on development environment. Make sure that you switch to the proper environment and the proper business group. And then you have created the secret group within that. And within the secret group, you have created a shared secret. It is of type symmetric key. It should not be using username password. It should be symmetric key. Then you can provide the sensitive information and then provide the expiration interval. If you don't provide the expiration interval, I think it will take by default 365 days, one year. And after the expiry, it will automatically remove the credentials or not expose those credentials to the downstream system. Okay. So in Secret Manager, you've created the credentials. Now you want to uh, access these credentials from your uh, functional monitor. The steps to do that are you download the monitor that you just created. It will be in the form of a zip file. You extract the zip file. You will see a bat.yaml file, main.dwl file, exchange.json file. The credentials will be added to bat.yaml. I'll show you how. So uh, to make use of any point CLI, to grant access 
from secret manager to functional monitor you will have to log into your anypoint platform you can use your uh, anypoint credentials uh, that is your username uh, and password if mfa is disabled if you have not disabled mfa then it is better that you go with uh, connected app credentials you can provide the connected app id connected app secret and log in into uh, any point platform using any bat cli once you do that you will have to switch to the proper organization using uh, bat cli space switch command and you can provide the business group id then uh, when you execute uh, bat switch environment uh, with the environment name it should be a string name such as development and not the id okay uh, so you will switch to the proper uh, environment in this case it is sandbox and after you do that you can execute bat hyphen cli space grant command and you can grant access to the shared secret which lies within your uh, secret group to do that you have to first cd into your uh, monitoring uh, folder the function monitoring folder that you downloaded earlier do you remember that this one and you downloaded the uh, monitor you accepted the zip file you have to cd into the folder this particular folder and when you execute the grant command from within the folder it will modify the bat dot yaml file and add the secrets the id for the secrets not the actual secret you only add the uh, id okay so when you are uploading this to exchange as well the actual credentials are not present in the yaml file or in the exchange it is secure so this modification will be done to bat dot yaml and here is an example of what will be present inside main dot dwl so this will be your ddd script or the functional monitoring script with which you are uh, testing some behavior so here you are testing whether the endpoint is uh, returning you a 200 uh, okay response you are checking the health of a particular api the alias are shown on line number 4 and 5 so these alias are variables that are present inside the dwl file and they will be used to uh, pass on the secret or sensitive information in a secure manner on towards a uh, http headers on line number 11 and 12 next you upload this uh, script on to uh, the functional monitoring page if it is a new script it will create uh, a new asset in uh, exchange as well as function monitor if it is an existing uh, monitor and it will uh, override the monitor and increment the version in your exchange so click on the support monitor button and then select the folder where you have uh, the bat.yaml main.dwl etc so once you do that the next time when the script runs you will see that the client id client secret are uh, secure so they are not visible in plain text they are passed during the run time in a secure manner and they are hidden from uh, view of the people who have access to look at the uh, monitoring logs that's it for me for today thanks for listening